and gentlemen, from Trail Park Motorsports in Augusta, Georgia, here is Kevin showing how to install a Terminator X on a turbo car. Good afternoon, you two. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Ace, this is just for you. The fucking dizzying ass videos that you like to have on your channel. Alright, anyways, I know this has been covered before, but it seems that every video on how to put a turbo car or Terminator X on a turbo car forgets all the extra little bits and pieces that you need. So I'm going to cover that here in this video. Without further ado, let's flip over to the engine. Okay, so I've shown this before a little bit, but we're going to go cover some stuff you may have missed if you didn't watch some of the other videos. I have 5.3. It's a Gen 3 motor with Gen 4 internals, gapped with about 30,000 rings. Some of the rings came in at 28. Most of them came in at 30. If, two th if that 2,000 is the difference between blowing and going, then whatever, I'll just go get another $500 engine. All right, so anyways, 5.3, rebuilt like a caveman. It has 80 millimeter from uh, VS Racing. It was a Denmark kit. It came with the wastegate, blow-off valve, China intercooler, and a whole mess of aluminum three-inch pipes, about half of which I didn't even use. I have also some truck manifolds kind of see it down there with v-bands on it and then built the whole hot side with two and a quarter inch pipe into three inch and then into the turbo so when i laid out the harness and started this whole adventure back in january i identified odd bank and even bank uh, coils which also then put everything for the throttle, the intake, and the fuel pressure in the right spot. As well, put the injector sub-harness in, oil pressure in the back, cam sensor in the back, crank sensor down at the bottom by the starter. That's where, that's where I recommend starting. Then, figure out where you want the harness to go into the car. For me, I chose to drill the hole back when I still had the PO1 computer. That's where I chose to put it, right there in the firewall. Let me get a little bit more light in here. All right, got the drop light out. Engine bay is a little bit better lit. So we have not Crown and not Black Rifle Coffee, but we have Strike Force Energy in water. Kind of the same deal as a, as a Monster or a Bang or whatever you got, but without all the crap. So, like I said, you start with laying out the harness and figuring out where you want it to go in the car. Once you've got it in the car, you can figure out where you want to mount the ECU. I chose to mount it to the cowl, so it's actually back about here a little bit. I mounted it with some aluminum straps, and I'll go ahead and drop a picture showing it in the car. Once I did that, you have to figure out how you want the display. And which display you want. Excuse the kayaks on the floor. Me and the kid may go out kayaking on the river again. All right, so I chose to put Pro Dash and Three and a half inch touch screen right there where the stock cluster was. Now, if you want to keep your stock cluster, only use a three and a half inch, you know, that's on you. But that's just how I chose to do it. Excuse the mess of the wiring in the car, I'm in the middle of doing a little bit more work. Or the flex and alternator sensor. Since the Terminator X does not come with an alternator wire because there's so many different versions of brackets whether you get it from a truck a corvette an f body a gto you know whatever else he's coming a van um, and 
So all the, all the different brackets, all the different mounting locations you can put it in, they just, they just let that up to you and, and, uh, that's no big deal. I got mine from Sloppy Mechanics Matt. Puts alternator there. And then I had to extend slightly. You can kind of see it down in here where the split loom is different. I extended the wire for the fuel pressure regulator. I got that fuel pressure regulator from Low Dollar Motorsports. The content sensor, you can see it down there. It's on the return line going straight back to the tank. That came from a 2016 Silverado. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the additional input and output wires. So I got the, the IO expansion wires for my Pro Dash. Now you could, and they're marketed for the Terminator, but you can use them as you need. I picked up this temperature sensor from also from Low Dollar Motorsports. In case you didn't watch that video on how I configured that up. But that's where two of my expansion IO wires are being used for. That was the two of the five expansion wires. The other three are being used for the fuel gauge, the fuel level gauge, and for turn signals. Now in the future, if I add anything else onto the Pro Dash, I have a link and somebody puts the link in one of my comments of uh, one of the videos for the individual pins. So for those individual pins, if I add anything in the future, like like a coolant pressure or crankcase pressure sensor, I'll put those, I'll, that's how I'll do it. Instead of buying the five separate wires because it's a little bit more expensive than just buying the pins and doing those connections yourself. The next thing that I had to buy that was extra was the coolant temperature sensor and the oil pressure sensor. I got both of those from an early LS Chevy truck. Uh, oil pressure is just a little bit hard to, to see with the intake in the way. The dome pressure sensor is a 0 to 50 PSI and it goes straight into the top of the wastegate. I also picked that up from Low Dollar Motorsports and I have a link in the description. I have, I'm currently on a two bar map sensor for now. I will be switching to a three bar and putting that into a bulkhead that I picked up from Motion Raceworks. But that, that's going to be a project for another day. The two bar map sensor I picked up from Tick Performance. And this intake air temperature sensor. Now, normally you would have that with your car or truck. I had it previously in my old cold air intake and then I sold it. So when it came time to go turbo, I was kicking myself in the butt because I didn't have it, but I picked up this one with the threads instead of a regular push in with a grommet from DIY Auto Tune. Lastly, we'll go over the buttons. Buttons on the steering wheel, the buttons and the brackets for them on the steering steering wheel are from Motion Raceworks. Okay, I switched over to the headset and the laptop, and I can I'm going to show you now how I have everything set up in here. Fuel table. My base fuel came from the Wizard when I built that. Then, after driving it a little bit, I used the learn table and transferred what was learned to the base table. After that, the handheld didn't have the two bar map sensor, it had the two and a half. So when I first created everything, I used the two and a half bar in the handheld and then came in here in the software and I selected the Holly two bar map. Coolant sensor, I used regular the regular GM coolant sensor, the intake temperature, manifold sense temperature, used standard GM one. Same thing with the 
fuel pressure. So for the ECU configuration, Terminator X, engine parameters, it's a, originally when I put the, put the Terminator on, I had the LS1 and then immediately swapped the motor out. So originally I had it set as a 5.7 liter. Then I switched it to a 325 cubic inch or a 5.3 liter. And the fuel type set is gasoline. I left this alone as far as the wideband O2. Then I set my fuel pressure at 43 on the, on the handheld. The handheld did not have the information for the DECA 80s that I have. So I had to find that. I Originally when I set it up, I used these FIC 850Hs to create the, all the original tables. But then when I transferred it to the laptop, I switched that over. Uh, if you want to copy that, cool. If not, I'm not going to be offended or triggered. Use, use it at your own risk. It's working out well for me. Ignition, LS24 tooth, basic I.O. So or, originally, this comes with both fans, fan one and fan two. I disabled fan two, and then it also had the air conditioning. By default, I disenabled that. Staging, as you saw in my how to do a two-step and trans brake video, I enabled this. In inputs and outputs, I have set for my staging input one, staging input two, and my electric fan. And then my staging output is a PWM ground. Idle speed, my cold idle speed is set at 1300, and as it warms up, it drops down to 800. With this current camshaft, that's about as low as I can target, and it actually have some chance of hitting it. Spark table. Now, when I made this, I basically copied everything that I had in my PO1 computer, my stock computer, and it's worked out fairly well since then. Now, I haven't raced the car, so this timing is fairly conservative. My rev limiters, again, as you may have seen in my previous video when I went over how to do the two-step, I have my main rev limiter at 7,000. I may bump that up in, a, in the future. I don't know. We'll see once, it gets, once I get time to race it or put it on a dyno. And then my two-step, my rev limiter number one is set currently at 3,500. I, again, may bump that up based on how the car performs on the racetrack. And again, I have my spark input for my rev limiter one, my two-step, set here. Right, so now go, moving into the inputs and outputs, I have my content sensor as input one and my dome pressure as my number two. Configuration for my flex fuel. I just went in here and selected GM flex fuel and it populated everything else for me. Dome pressure, same thing. Go into configuration and I selected Holly 50 PSI sensor. It comes out the same with all of these as the low dollar motorsports one. The boost table. I've changed this a little bit since one of my previous videos. I have it set up for a dome pressure control using a single three port Mac valve. I have my launch input enable to target five pounds on the trans brake. My boost scramble, that's when I press my bump button, it will give me down track an additional five PSI on top. Of the dome and my safeties because I have a two bar map sensor I have it set to cut ignition at 14 psi and revert to waste gate at 12 psi the dome source pressure I have the set to compressor if you go to fixed that would be how you would do it if you had co2 on the car that's how Cletus has Ruby set up and then I copied my PID information from one of the tune files in Apple's Google Drive. Why reinvent the wheel? This is what these settings for the P, I, and D are working well on Brett DeLong's car. My inputs and outputs on here, my trans brake launch and my boost plus my additional five pounds on the gate are both set as grounds. And my boost solenoid, that's my Mac valve, is a PWM minus. Advanced tables. I have a few of these set up right now. This one is for 
my flex fuel offset, my fuel modifier. Basically copied everything that was on the Holly video on how to do this. So at 10%, 10% of ethanol content, it does nothing. It doesn't add or subtract fuel based on that. Now, if I put in straight gasoline, so maybe I put it, dump in some C16, it will take out 5%. If I have straight eth, I get a can of uh, Ignite E90, E93 or E98 or whatever that is, it will add 30% fuel to my target on the VE. Okay, so I went over my 1D table. I have a 2D table that is essentially nothing more than a copy of how GM adds timing to a stock uh, flex fuel truck. So at 0% ethanol, it doesn't add any spark. At 100%, it will add eight degrees of spark to it. And then it blends that throughout there. It also adds timing based on the map sensor. So in my one axis, I have ethanol content zero to 100, and I have on the other axis, zero to 210 or two bars, maxing out that two bar map sensor as well. So if I'm at 100% ethanol and 210 KPA in my intake, I'm only going to add two degrees of timing. All right, and then lastly here on my pin map, my inputs, I have input one is my ethanol content, input two is my rev limiter one, staging input one, and trans brake. Went over that in my how to do two-step and trans brake on a Terminator X video. I have input three as my staging input two, or my bump function, and my boost scram. And then I have my dome pressure sensor as input number four. My outputs, I have output one as my electric fan number one. That was a default in there. I didn't touch it. My staging output, again, from that other video, I have that is in output two. And my boost plus solenoid is on output number three. I have one spare output available for the terminator. Now my terminator is connected to my pro dash through the can feature. So while my terminator can't see everything that the pro dash can see, dash can see everything that the computer is seeing. So on my computer I have my fuel level sensor, my trans temperature sensor, and that's it as far as all right I hope that answered some questions that people may or may not have had. If it did give it a thumbs up. If it didn't, go ahead and subscribe to my OnlyFans. I've got some nice feet pictures on there. And wash your dang hands. All right. Have a good day.